It's me again. Welcome. I'm so glad to see you again. Let's start with some background about game theory. Game theory is a domain of science interested in studying games, strategies, and winning conditions. Games play an important role in many domains of science. Games are widely used in economics and mathematics, but also have applications in cryptography, where typically the goal of a game is to protect pieces of information, as well as in operating systems, where the goal of a game is typically to prevent errors, or in artificial intelligence. Games are a very adapted framework for our game in the maze, and a great excuse to investigate advanced algorithms. If you manage to code a program that computes winning positions in a game, you will be ready for just about any programming challenge. Recall that we would like to play a game in a maze where two players, a rat and a python, are trying to grab all the pieces of cheese before they are opened. During the game, these players can make simultaneous decisions. For example, the python can decide to move left while the rat decides to move up. To describe a game, we use a very specific graph that we call the arena. The arena is a graph where each vertex summarizes the actual state of the game. By state of the game, we mean the positions of the players, the positions of the remaining pieces of cheese, and the score for each player. For example, there is an initial vertex that corresponds to the initial configuration where both the rat and the python have score zero and are at their starting positions and all pieces of cheese are spread throughout the maze. Then there's also vertices corresponding to all possible configurations that might occur during a game of pirate. Vertices are connected by edges that are labeled according to two variables. The first variable corresponds to the decision made by the rat, and the second variable to the decision made by the python. Are you ready for an example? Let us consider a simple game where a 3x3 three three maze contains a single piece of cheese at the center, and the rat and the python are both hungry, hungry for cheese. From the initial configuration, several things could happen. The rat can move right, up, or not at all. And the python can move left, down, or not at all. We thus have three times three, so nine, configurations that can be reached from the initial configuration. Here's what happens if the rat moves up and the python moves left. Here's what happens if the rat moves up and the python stays still. Here's what happens if the rat moves up and the python moves down. Here's what happens if the rat moves right and the python moves left. Here's what happens if the rat moves right and the python stays still. Here's what happens if the rat moves right and the python moves down. Here's what happens if the rat stays still and the python moves left. Here's what happens if the rat stays still and the python moves down. And finally, here is what happens if both the rat and the python stay still. There are several vertices in the arena corresponding to the end of the game, when the rat or the python reaches the central position that contains the cheese. The first player to reach the position will be the winner. A strategy of a player is a function that associates each vertex in the arena, which can also be described as each state of the game with a move for that player. One example of a strategy is a greedy algorithm which involves systematically going to the nearest piece of cheese in the maze. Once the two players have chosen their strategies, the game can be entirely known and the winner can be identified by letting the game of pirate play out. As such, a play can be seen as a walk in the arena depending on the two chosen strategies. So that's all from me. In the next lesson, Patrick will show you how to compute good strategies.